Holy shit. Dave Chappelle is like a, a hot air balloon, you know? He keeps ascending to new heights. He's just... I don't even know what level he's at at this point. Like when he... Have you ever... Do you see a more aggressive mic drop than this one? He almost threw that thing to the ground. I was like, Jesus Christ, the dude's on the next level. He's going after these networks. I don't know if you listened to my episode about a month back or so. I said, uh, what was it called? Uh, don't Touch My Money or something like that. It's about that book I'm reading. It's called uh, Everything You Need to Know About the Music Industry. Wow. It's amazing how this all tied right back to that. I knew I had a gut feeling. I was in I was in um, Valley Village, rather, just walking, and I saw that title, and I just remembered all of the artists. Like this, at this point, has been said the outcry for uh, artists like going up against, not necessarily going up against the system, but just being like, man, the system is like some neck slavery shit, you know. We've seen it all, right? Like, I don't know if you ever read the, the the New Jim Crow. Maybe I'll do an episode on that next time. But essentially, after Jim Crow laws, they fell. So segregation ended and everything and black people could be integrated fully, you know, and it's still, even till now, there literally aren't. Like, Black Lives Matter is a fucking movement right now in 2020 and Jim Crow fell in like the 50s or the 60s, right? So goes to show you how the slow the pace of progress really is but pretty much to replace the old slave master dynamic they did like that jim crow where they would essentially arrest you for anything and put you into the uh they'd send you off to go work for free essentially in prisons as a slave but it's not slave by the book no you're a felon now and then when they did the war on drugs in the States, what that they announced, I forget who announced it, Reagan or whoever in the 80s or the 70s or the 90s, especially when crack came about. That was all just, be, you could take away everybody's human, a person's human rights as long as you call them or deem them a felon or a convict. Then you can strip them totally of human rights and it's okay. And you can put them through essentially the same factory farming system that slavery used to be as far as factory farming for labor or uh you know like poor black people are worth more to corporations in prison than they are like out free right because they get paid x amount of dollars whatever it is thirty forty thousand dollars a year to keep a prisoner alive so it's funny how even in art the same shit happens what Chappelle said about prince was amazing i didn't even know that the reason that when prince came back he referred himself as prince the artist is because that is what all artists are referred to as in these contracts which again this book lays out and i had no idea that when Chappelle walked away from the Chappelle show he got paid nothing i mean it makes sense now that you walked away you uh you breached your contract, you know, you obviously have, you have to finish the whole term for it, for it to be able to, for them to pay you and for them, for you to uh, essentially vest. It's just like getting a job where they go, you could have these stock options every year, 25% vest. You need to stay four years to get 100% of your off. They probably did a similar thing where you have to finish it per their whatever. So that's crazy. This whole time I thought he got paid. Because I remember, if you remember back in the day, Chappelle show season one or season two, I forget which one it is, the highest selling DVDs ever for a, for a TV show. The, ever. Obviously, this lined up with times that DVDs were hot as shit. But like, to think he never got paid from that, that's fucking crazy. It's some str straight up slavery shit. And now for it to just be on so many of the biggest pl streaming platforms and the man gets paid nothing because the contract says that, it's fucking shocking. And the way he's taking them on, oh my God, dude. I just want to applaud it. It's like, it's almost like watching a war a, a war happen. Like that was a, that was a cry for war. What is it? Like, um, like he started war there, you know? Like straight up, he said, either play game, like play fair. And, and this is the type of thing, the way it looked, it looked like it just seemed to me like this is going to work. 
I, I watched it twice. I watched it again this morning. Like I did some meditation. And for some reason, after I meditated, the first thing I was like, I got to watch Unforgiven again. I watched it last night. But it's like, this is going to do something. First of all, it's 5 million views already. Uh, such a G. Th Chappelle's Instagram is such a perfect representation of this man. He's got like four things posted. He's following like one person. I got to click who's following, but I forgot to click. I bet it's like LeBron. Uh, but like, and I didn't see, I'm sure LeBron probably posted that too. But like this, every, it's getting to a point where there's so many influential, rich, essentially billionaire black artists that are going to propagate or not even artists necessarily, but influential people, athletes, artists, whatever you want to call it. They're going to propagate these type of things. So they spread like wildfire through social media. And he has the amazing power to actually disrupt the views that he's going for. I think the, the his plea, if you haven't watched it, summarize it essentially that Chappelle show is on Netflix, Viacom, CBS, HBO, and the man doesn't get paid a dollar. Because when he originally signed with Comedy Central, he signed away the rights to it in perpetuity. So essentially, there is no time limit for this shit. So it's crazy. It's like, sl it's straight up slavery stuff. It's not slavery of you. It's slavery of your content, of your art, of your creation. And it is just, it's mind boggling, you know? It's literally mind boggling. So I guess Prince probably came, the reason he came back, I don't even know Prince's stories. He probably had album obligations with his contract, probably signed for three or four. And they terminate everything as far as paying him if he doesn't meet all that shit, you know? So it's like, from the outside, it looks incredible. So what's beautiful is that huge $50 million paycheck Chappelle got, or $60 million. Remember when he first came back out and he did the Aquanimity or whatever it's called and the other one, I forget. He dropped those two specials and he got like, oh no, no, he got it. It was a three special deal. He had two ready and then he dropped another one, I think it was. But he got 60 for that and that is the universe almost paying him back for his dues of what was owed for Chappelle's show. Because the man, I guess, never got paid for that. Maybe he got paid for season one I'd, or he got paid for just the acting and the union fees for it while he was there. But he never got paid for all of the royalties and streams and licensing deals that have been made from it as a result of this super sought after show. He never got to touch that. They just paid him for like, here's your 600 a day for like acting for whatever the days it, it took to shoot. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't really know, but like his anger in that thing, it's crazy. It's like you feel it. It's like, whoa, I didn't even know you could do this shit. He's on the next level. He's just, I don't, it's, it's something I've never before seen. Like declaring war was essentially one of, Chappelle declares war. I think that's what I want to call this, you know? It's unbelievable. Like I, what will become of this? I think he's going to lay out the foundation for something that all artists will be able to have as a reference, you know? Like reading this book, it already armed me with like all this type of knowledge. But at the same time, in that special, he says he, had a, he was expecting a child. And what could he do? I mean, it's like it looks like a good deal, so to speak. So what what are your options at that time? You know, like you it, you shop it around. Nobody wants to touch it. And you just want it to come to fruition. So you say yes to whoever will say yes to you. And then they just end up fucking you like this in the like crazy like imagine imagine that court get well he signed his he signed over all rights as you can see that's a signature right there saying that he gets no that's almost being like imagine having a job where you work 40 hours a week and then you ne you don't get paid at the end of the two weeks and the and the employer comes up to you with a straight face and goes actually technically what you signed doesn't require us to pay you and it's like don't you want me to continue work? Don't you, like, there is no plan. There's nothing in it built for longevity or for the artist to actually develop a long-going relationship with the platform or with the network. It's the most greed robbery shit you've ever seen. This person does not understand the language, and we're going to exploit them for everything that they end up creating. 
Because I assume when they sign these things, they 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 assume it's a dud, right? They, like, think about how many hit shows like this have there been. Chappelle show, I guess Key and Peele was pretty big. Uh, you should leave that one on Netflix. I think you should leave or whatever. That's really funny. Um, Chris Rock's was canceled, but that was on the Chris Rock show was on for a couple of years. But like, there hasn't been a lot of people sketch style shows that have hit a home run like this. Nobody, nobody has hit that level of home run. So I think all of those, they probably signed a million of those contracts where it's like, what the person ended up creating was garbage. So it's like you never really hear back. For it. it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But when you create gold and the technicality of the contract lets them just use it 100% without paying you, it's how is that not slavery? It is akin to killing a man, like he said. And it's amazing, especially as a comedian, just the way he spoke, the way he tied those stories together, it's, ama- it's a lesson that, in stand up, I don't even know what he's like a philosopher level at this point. This nigga is philosopher level at this point. That's not even, I can't even, I'm like at a loss for words, as you can see, but it's like, it goes to show that if you, if you say something profound is on the same level as something hilarious, you know, you could jam pack it. This was, this special was more jam packed on the profound than it was on the funny. And he peppered in funny here and there because he's Chappelle. He does how he does, right? But it just shocked me that I'm like, man, this is, I, I just want to keep. It was just like eight four, uh, eight minutes forty six seconds. The video he did on the, on, uh, like eight months ago, you know? Wow, look at that! I literally forgot the dude's name. That got choked out. What's that? This is on me, obviously, but at the same time, this goes to show you how these movements really work. But then again, I'm not like the biggest like guy with a flag just being like, oh, this shit's. But it's like that guy was impo- that na- his name was important. But there's so many of these Ahmed Aubrey and Brianna, like whatever, like so many of these names come and go. Now I feel like shit. Now I have shame for not remembering. I can't breathe was said but like it just goes to show you that ultimate level storytelling there's nothing that replaces it there's nothing that replaces that ultimate high level of storytelling it's almost it when Chappelle talks I, I almost think of like an elder of a village addressing a small group of people like the way he brings stories in it's like that was I can't even put it to where and the, the mic drop at the end. I just don't even know what to make of it. I wonder what will happen in this. What will the networks do? The fact that Netflix is that clutch, that's something you never see. And he even said it himself. He's like, the fact that a businessman or we'll say a business you know, entity was able to prioritize his own feelings and his strife against money bags is crazy because – they ob- they obviously paid to licenses from whoever the owner is, Comedy Central, whoever, I guess Comedy Central is licensing it to all these people. So does that mean they paid Comedy Central whatever, a million, 500,000, whatever it is to have it on for two years? Or I don't know what the number would be, maybe way more. But they just forewent that loss. They took that as a loss just to preserve the relationship with Chappelle. Is that what happened or were they able to get out of their contract? In either way, it's like, yo, I salute Netflix. I salute Netflix, you know, for doing that. Just being like, yo, they're like, they know this man is, they want to be on the side of Dave Chappelle. So they're like, this is easy money. This is small money for us right now. We're such a massive platform. Let's get rid of this to appease this amazing, gifted contributor that is an ally of ours right now. And the last thing we want to do is piss him off because I think what Chappelle showed in this thing is that he is more powerful than the, than these net. I mean, if that thing just on his page has five million views, God knows how many. I know Cedric the Entertainer, uh, DL Hewley. I'm assuming, like I said, LeBron probably did. LeBron loves to just make sure any like black 
issue is propagated. LeBron's on some next shit too. He's once he retires from basketball, it'll be interesting to see what that guy ends up doing. But just blew my mind. Like, yo, this is gonna work. I would love to just be able to see what the numbers were before this special drop, like on HBO Go, uh, on Vi- uh, and all these platforms that stream it. I would love to see the before and after. And day by day, one day after Unforgiven releases, two day after Unforgiven releases, three days. I want to see what that plummet looks like. Because I'll be honest with you. I torrented season one and two. <laughs> you know, and Chappelle's my guy, you know. But times are tough. The man would understand. Yo, Chappelle, if you're watching this, you get it, man. I grew up on that stuff. It's like public domain as far as I'm concerned. But if they are robbing you, then, I, then I'm going to make sure they aren't getting paid either. So that's what the pirating does. When it goes back to a platform that the motherfucker is actually getting a piece out of it, I'll watch it through that. But until then, yo, stream it online. Don't let any of these people get paid. That's crazy. I had no idea they never paid this guy a dime. It's just crazy. Yo, yo, it's Boss Will Hop. Uh, that was a clip from this week's Patreon bonus episode. If you want to catch the rest or get access to weekly bonus episodes, just go to patreon.com slash the immigrant section. Uh, otherwise, episodes are going to keep coming out every Tuesday, same place, same time. If that's not enough for you, you got to become a certified refugee at patreon.com slash the immigrant section. Weekly bonus episodes and more. Join the immigrant revolution, y'all. Uh, until next time, peace.